Hello everyone. We are going to start a series of videos to explain the concepts in quality controls. We will start with an overview on quality controls. What do you know about quality controls? What are quality controls? Before we ask that question, we need to know about analytical systems. An analytical system is where we do the process of testing and derive a result. It can be a testing system where the results are obtained in numbers, example biochemistry and hematology cell counts where you get discrete numbers as your results. It can be one where the reports are positive or negative, example serology tests like dengue, IgM, IgG etc. It can be also a semi-quantitative test uh, like Vidal where we give titers such as 1 is to 80, 1 is 160 or urinary protein partially quantified as 1 plus 2 plus or in urine microscopy results such as 2 to 4 per low power field, 2 to 4 per high power field and so on. So there are many ways of reporting and another kind of test may be the descriptive reports as in case of histopathology and cytology and reports can also be identification of pathogens as in culture reports with sensitivity patterns. So we see very many kinds of reporting systems that we have in the laboratories. Whichever may be the analytical system, it has to be maintained in a stable manner to obtain accurate and reliable results. But these analytical systems include several components like equipment, reagents, calibrators, environment and operators and all these are subject to change. Look at this picture. There are so many factors in there. There is an operator. That operator can be another person the next day. Analytical equipment is here. There are reagents. There are this laboratory water, storage conditions, refrigerator, ambient temperature monitoring. So there are so many variables in a laboratory which makes the analytical system unstable, which can make analytical systems un unstable. So let's call it potentially unstable analytical systems. So it is thus important to monitor the analytical system for stability and this is where quality controls play their role. Controls are materials and mechanisms to monitor the analytical or the examination phase of laboratory tests. The ISO calls this process ensuring the quality of examination under clause 5.6. If you look at the ISO standard and turn to clause 5.6, it is about ensuring the quality of examinations. Ensuring the quality of examinations. This is achieved by employing error detection mechanisms to safeguard the examination or the analytical phase. However, it is vital to understand that avoiding chances of error in the pre-analytical and post-analytical phases are also equally important. In this video, however, we will only talk about controlling the analytical phase. So if you look at this picture, you will see the laboratory processes are pre-analytical, analytical and post-analytical and this is where this set of videos are focused on. So what are the errors that can happen in the analytical phase? We have to understand that first. There are some concepts which are very important when we talk about the analytical phase and two of these are that what we are going to talk about now. Now assume a stable biological material with a known value is run on the same analytical system for a large number of times. Let us call this runs. Let us call this over a long period of time say 20 days, maybe 20 runs, 30 runs and will you be able to get the same reading daily? which is very unlikely. How much of variation is allowed? Th this concept is called precision and the lack of precision is called imprecision. This is measurable if your test is a quantitative one that is the test results are in are said in numbers. Example biochemistry test, cell counts in hematology etc. This variation is expressed as a coefficient of variation or CV percent. And in qualitative and semi-quantitative methods, a calculation of CV percent may not be possible, but a stable biological material will yield consistent results over a stated period of time. The stated period of time is called the stability of that biological material. 
and such stable biological materials are called internal quality controls. I hope that concept is becoming clear now. So, what is internal quality control measuring? Basically, the degree of imprecision that your analytical system is showing is what you can find from a internal quality control material. Once again to recap, if you use a stable biological material on an analytical system over a long period of time, a certain degree of imprecision will be seen that is an inherent imprecision and this imprecision is measured as percentage CV or coefficient of variation and that shows the uh, degree of imprecision that is there in the analytical system even when the system is stable. This is a very important concept and any change in the degree of imprecision is what will warrant that the equipment is possibly undergoing a change and there is some instability which is showing more imprecision that is allowed. This becomes the key concept in the understanding of internal quality controls. Now, the second scenario, let us assume a sample with unknown value is analyzed in 100 different analytical systems in 100 different locations. All results are compiled and analyzed. What is the average or let us call it mean value and how much variation is allowed from the mean? This concept is called accuracy and the lack of this accuracy is called inaccuracy. This is also measurable if your test is a quantitative one. That is if the test results are set in numbers example again by chemistry and cell counts etc. The variation is expressed generally as Z scores or standard deviation index. In qualitative and semi quantitative methods, the calculation of Z score is not possible, but the reports are in the tune of in consensus or not in consensus. These and other terminologies are employed that will be discussed later in respective sections of external quality assurance. Uh, such a mechanism of detecting inaccuracies is called external quality assurance or proficiencies testing or interlaboratory comparison. Look at this picture. This is uh, the diagrammatic depiction of a PT or an equas provider. PT samples are unknown samples which are given to multiple participants, let us say n number of participants and all the participants will take the sample, analyze the sample and give the reports back to the PT provider who will now analyze all the results, find the mean and the standard deviation of each laboratory and send the information back to the laboratory. That is how a PT program works. So, and that is a measure and that is an indication of the accuracy of the lab. Suppose there are 20 labs and all the labs together are reporting uh, different numbers with a mean of say 100 and you are reporting 120 whatever the unit may be. So, that is a large difference from the others mean which means that you probably have an error in your analytical system which generally is called the bias and indicates an inaccuracy in your system. So, depending on what the mean is and your Z score is and the, the PT provided will indicate the Z score and a Z score of more than 2 is generally not acceptable. Another method of finding our inaccuracy using your internal controls is also possible. This system is called the peer group system. In, in the peer group system what you do is your internal quality control provider enables a mechanism whereby all the users of the internal quality control will pull in their results and periodically their mean values are released thereby indicating any shift in your accuracy. This is also a very important way of understanding your inaccuracies and it is actually a very robust method because there are many participants and it is a daily process and that will give you a much robust estimate of inaccuracies. And therefore, this is one aspect that you have to keep in mind while you are ordering your internal quality control material. Some internal quality control materials provide this facility and such providers should be given the preference while you are ordering your internal control materials. This is how the peer group mechanism works. The IQC providers will give you known materials. These are not blind samples as in EQUAS where you do not know the value. IQC you already know the value because it is already provided with your QC material. You 
analyze everybody else also analyzes and you pull in your values and the IQC provider finds a mean and lets everybody know what is the mean and how much you are straying away from the mean therefore giving you an idea about your inaccuracies imprecisions can also be gathered from IQC providers. So, this is a very important uh, aspect of QC material while you are ordering if the peer group data is available that is a great advantage. Now, the second concept that I would like to talk about is the concepts again of accuracy and precision. Now, you look at this grid here. The columns depict the accuracy or the lack of it and the rows depict the precision or the lack of it. Figure 1 shows good precision and good accuracy. All data points are accumulated, different data points which is gathered through different runs over a period of time and they are all close together and are on target as you see in this picture. And figure 2 shows good precision but lack of accuracy. All data points accumulated through different runs over a period of time are all close together but are away from the target. Figure 3 shows lack of precision. All data points accumulated through different runs over a period of time are all dispersed wide but are more or less around the target. Figure 4 shows lack of precision as well as lack of accuracy. All data points are dispersed all over the place and are all far away from the target. Why is it important to understand and classify these errors as precision and accuracy? That is the most relevant question one has to ask where controlling is concerned. It is important to understand the, the error type so that the root cause can be understood. Different problems in the analytical systems cause specific error patterns directing the operator to take appropriate remedial mechanisms. Thus, the pattern seen in the controls both internal and external can tell different stories and will enable easy troubleshooting. So, once again to see where the controlling required in your laboratory, which are the areas wherever analysis happens is the answer. The QZs are important, hematology, cytology, histopathology, microbiology, biochemistry, clinical pathology, wherever testing happens controlling is vital. That is how you safeguard your analytical phase. To recap the basic concepts of precision and accuracy. The lack of precision is called imprecision and is measured as CV percent and lack of accuracy is bias or inaccuracy and that is generally measured in through the equas as Z scores or also through if you have got peer group data available through IQCs that again enables you to understand your lack of accuracy. Thank you.